Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle! Hello folks, uh, the scrap man has just been and dropped me off a stack of old leaf springs which is great. Um, in, in return I always, uh, you know, we, we trade. No money involved, just uh, just trade. So I'll, uh, I'll get as much scrap together for him as I can. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weigh in these bits of... Um, bits of container just because they're in the way at the minute it would be handy to keep but you know uh if i if i make it worth his while he keep bringing me leaf springs and um and that's more valuable to me than than any of the other bits i'm going to scrap today uh i'm going to take a look at a couple of old projects that i'm scrapping um things that i'm not going to do anything with anymore or they're too badly broken to to be functional uh, and I thought, like, I'll show you guys, but also it's just for me, so I've got some video record of the, um, of my previous projects, like, before YouTube, these are, these are before YouTube projects, two of, the, two of them are quite cool, so, I really want to just, uh, make a video record of them, you know? Okay, so this is the ice cream bike, as it was known, um, I built this, oh, it must be eight or nine years ago now, and, um, my dad had organised a, a cycle ride through France, so my dad, my, my brother, both our girlfriends, brother-in-law, we all got on these, um, we all got on our bikes. We got down to Portsmouth with the cars, left the cars in Portsmouth, got on a ferry, and then, uh, you know, um, cycled down from, I think, Le Havre to Cherbourg. Uh, it's a diet. I don't know, you could probably do it in 90 miles, but I think we did a couple of hundred miles getting down there, because just like the most beautiful trip, all camping and that, like, is why I built this thing, because uh, my girlfriend at the time wasn't wasn't a rider at all, so she wouldn't take any gear on her back or on the back of a bike, I mean, she didn't want to, um, so I made this, which is awesome. So <laughs> uh, basically, I started off with a, a lady's bike, and, um, Kept the get the arse end of the ladies bike, including the Sturmy Archer free speed and the brakes. The uh, I had to make my own custom brake handle. The reason for that will become apparent in a second. Basically, I didn't want to break the front front wheels because I was worried I'd get uh, get an imbalance. So I just went for rear. Rear wheel braking anyway. Um, well, I got a joint in the cables there on that little bell crank, and a cable whips round, and then to the back wheel from here. So there's a, a huge amount of cable and a lot of stretch, which is why I had to go for this um, this big lever because there's so much stretch. And you know, um, anyone that's tried riding rim brakes with uh, steel rims. You'll understand that they're not that effective, and we did have a bit of rain, and that was part of the uh, part of the downfall or my de my demise. How I came to have one of the most spectacular crashes uh, <laughs> anyone had ever witnessed. You've got, uh, you know, because I'm I'm up in Lincolnshire and it's completely flat here, so I tested it. I'd rode around a bit, and uh, you know, been perfectly happy with it. But when we got to France, um, you know, they got some some lovely coastal roads there. Uh, but also got some fairly chunky roads that you can't avoid. avoid. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I got up to about 30 miles an hour on this thing. Uh, brakes completely ineffective. And then, uh, motor, motorbikers call it a tank slapper. Basically you get a bit of shimmy in the steering, so um, the steering does that and it gets progressively worse. Um, and it actually got so bad that it spat me off the bike. The bike did a somersault, I went one way, ended up uh, ended up what my leg cut open from my ankle all the way up to my ass uh, you know I slid I slid a fair few meters on the road and um, and what uh, yeah the bike the bike did a somersault all the wheels were bent up so there's me and my brother trying to straighten the wheels out the side of the road uh, got it back and um, that was halfway through the trip and did another 75 miles on it after that anyway the damage damage you see here was done a bit later um, I took this to the pub with a couple of mates in the front and uh, some little pikey robbed it and um, you know I borrowed the chef's bike 
which got me in a load of trouble because I didn't ask him first. You know, I took it back, but he was still pissed off, but whatever. And uh, I got my bike, back, my bike back, got a black eye. Um, but that doesn't matter, the, the, you know, got my bike back. <laughs> but yeah, he got, he got a bit bit buggered up in the meantime. And um, coming home that night, the wheel collapsed. But this is a floor design, so I'm going to save the wheels off the front, save the, save the hub off the back, and then the rest is going to go to the scrap man. Oh, and that lovely brook saddle. It's only a plastic one, but you know, I can never, I can never throw a brook saddle away, cheesy plastic or not. Okay, this is the other thing I wanted to show you. This is a, this is called the dog bike. Basically, I think that one was 2010. Yeah, and then the next summer. We went on a cycling holiday in um, in the Peak District, uh, but by this time I'd uh, I'd got my dog Rambo, and um, you know I never leave my dog in kennels, in it like he just wouldn't like it. Uh, so <laughs> I needed to bring him on big uh, big bike rides, and like you know I know a lot of people have a dog running behind them, but you know that's okay on a footpath, but you can't go down the road like that, can you? Well, not him anyway, because he. He fucking, uh, he loves chasing the cars, that dog. So, um, I made this. It's actually got a, actually got a strap inside. And the other end of it goes around his collar. So, um, so he couldn't jump out. So this is uh, a remote steered, a remote steered cross country cargo bike, I suppose. No one's ever built anything like this. Not that I've seen anyway. Hang on, we'll just wait for this train to go by. This bike, unlike the ice cream bike, the ice cream bike was built with an inherent um, inherent design flaws. You know the um, the stability of the whole thing just makes it horrifically unpleasant if you get anything over 12 miles an hour. You know, like it's like um, but this this one. I I tell you, it just handled so beautifully. Um, I kept I kept the rake on the on the front fork exactly the same as the original bike, and you know kind of tried to keep the geometry identical to to, um, to a normal bike apart from the, uh, the the difference in between so I laid the whole thing out on a big sheet of plywood like made a little jig up I suppose um, the only reason I'm scrapping this uh, and I, I won't scrap it all I'll save all the good bits obviously but um, so I used I used security fencing to build it uh, so it's the only only sort of lightweight pipe I could get my hands on and um, you know, it's got these little little remnants of fencing, and then the uh, the cargo compartment. I was in a hurry, so the inside's nice, so the dog didn't get cut up. But the outside, uh, you know, I was gonna, I don't know what my plans were. I think I was gonna stitch and glue it, but I ended up just stitching it. Um, didn't have time to do anything else, and uh, it stayed like that ever since. And I could replace the plywood, but the thing is, those little bits are all over the frame. And um, oh, there are other bits, you know. This, this was built in a hurry. It's light though, um, and it, you know, structurally, absolutely perfect. When we went on a on a load of trips after that, after the, you know, after the main trip, we went on um, me and my mates went on a big trip. It was basically a pub crawl on bikes. Um, ended up in the forest, camping and that. Had had everyone's beer in the front of this thing, you know. It was like a like a barge. Really good bike, and I love cargo bikes. Like, I love bikes, but I especially have a soft spot for cargo bikes. You know, things that are useful. Like, uh, and I really, 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 really want to build some more. Um, and both these bikes, I have incredibly fond memories of, uh, but don't want to cycle them anymore. And I know no one else is going to want them. You know, let's have a little look at this linkage. We've got a bell crank outside, another crank on the nose, another crank down here, rod ends, or rose joints as I think the Yanks called them, I don't know. Um, nuts welded into the ends of the pipes. Ah, uh, oh, man. I might see if I can ride it quickly. It's got no air in the tyres, but um, we'll just take it for a little spin, see what happens. No 
chance. That chain might as well be a solid bit of steel now, you know? Folks, um, like I say, this is mainly a, a little keepsake for myself. Um, hope you enjoyed looking at a couple of pre-YouTube videos of mine. Um, I'm gonna get to work pulling the good bits off these machines now and getting the rest of my scrap pile built. And then, uh, then what? Crack on with something else, I suppose. Anyway, take care, folks. Um, Please feel free to like, subscribe and comment on that. Um, let me know how excited you are about cargo bikes and I'll, uh, I'll hopefully be building another one soon. Alright, bye bye.